When you see El Capitan for the first time, I mean, it takes your breath away. Early in the morning, there's this one panel of the wall that illuminates first, the Dawn Wall. It has never been climbed until Tommy Caldwell came along. Nobody had actually considered trying. It's like stepping off the edge of the earth. I guess the question here is, why are you doing this? I was this very fragile little kid. He didn't crawl till he was over two. I think my dad felt the best way to prepare this kid for the world was to toughen him up a little bit. And so he took me on all the craziest climbing walls you could ever do, and he did it with a six-year-old. By the time I was 14 or 15, there was climbs that I could do that my dad couldn't. Tommy became one of the best young climbers. And then he got invited to Kyrgyzstan to rock climb. And all of a sudden, we were hostages. After being held captive for six days, four young Americans confront the ultimate choice to kill or be killed. He saved their lives. But he became a different person. Ever since Kyrgyzstan, I just have this fire in me. This has always been my safe place, my way to deal with life. And I was looking across at the Dawn Wall, the last unclimbed big swath of stone. I decided maybe that could be climbed. I needed a partner. Kevin, he was one of the best in the world. It only up to rock 30 feet. But everybody else thought I was crazy. At this point, I have no idea what I'm getting into. It's about to consume six years of my life. This is a pipe dream, man. Come on. Nothing left to do but just take a couple deep breaths. If Tommy and Kevin can actually do this, it will be... Come on! ...the most difficult climb ever done. And it's going to go on day after day. Suddenly, the whole world was watching. Ah! And one of them stuck. Ah! It was pretty clear that that was it. I don't want to hold you back. Maybe this climb really was impossible. Ah! We are capable of so much more than we could ever imagine. Hello everyone at CIC. I haven't seen you all in a while and I know it feels a little bit strange these days uh, doing worship in our own separate places, whether it be in our home, office, or wherever you are. But I'm glad you made it today for worship and uh, we're starting a new series called The Dawn Wall. Uh, how many of you watched the movie Dawn Wall? A while back, I've done a series, I believe, uh, on a movie called Free Solo, and some of you may remember that. It's similar in style, yet a little different. Free Solo was basically, if you recall, uh, just like the title of the movie, climbing the wall without any, you know, ropes, no protective gears, device, no nothing. Just climbing the wall as is, and that's why they call it Free Solo. This movie, Dawn Wall, is a little bit different, but it's a story about Tommy and Kevin climbing the Dawn Wall of Yosemite National Park. And if in the background you may be able to see at least you know part of the Dawn Wall, I think the poster uh, from the movie. Uh, but before I talk about the movie Dawn Wall, I want to share a passage from Genesis chapter 12 and 2 Timothy 1. First of all, Genesis 12, it says this in verses 1 and 2. The Lord has said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. In 2 Timothy 1.7 it says this, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self, the self-discipline. Now some people who've watched the movie, either Free Solo or Dawn Wall, there's like two different ideas or, or thoughts or opinions about uh, this type of movie. Some people say they're crazy. You know, it's 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 they're stupid. And on the other hand, some people watch this and they're just they're just mesmerized. They say this is incredible. This is the best movie, best story I've ever seen or heard. Anyway, you may feel different about this movie as well. But Tommy and Kevin uh, were the first ones to successfully climb the Dawn Wall in 2015, and it was a monumental moment in climbing history, to say the least. Everyone, at least everyone interested in climbing, had their eyes glued to the screen, watching these two guys, 
who were just plain hardcore? What's the craziest thing that you've done in your lifetime so far? Hey, it could be different for each of us, right? Anyone jumped off an airplane, for example? I mean, skydiving? Some of you might have done that, right? As crazy as it sounds, some people get a kick out of that, right? Uh, maybe some of you might be surfers. I don't know. Uh, anyone that's into extreme sports, like BMX, or maybe some doing, doing some stunts, you know, there are different ways, but I think one of the most extreme things that I may have done is like whale watching from the shores of Southern California. Maybe the most extreme sport for us is watching extreme sports via YouTube while sitting in our lazy boy at home. I mean, there's a lot out there, I know, but to be climbing this kind of a wall for days, I mean, these guys are climbing for days and days. Sounds crazy. And it's like 3,000 feet high, straight up. I mean, is this even legal? I have to ask myself that question. There's a lot of things that we do that seems crazy to other people. But we usually do it because we want to. Because we feel passion in a certain area of our lives. Uh, we get an idea that excites us. And not only excites us, but it moves us. It calls us into action. Or maybe because we have a certain skill set. But sometimes we are asked to do things that's like way out. We weren't really prepared for it. We don't always plan for it ahead of time, right? We have no clue what we're getting into at times. But it sort of falls on our lap. And you got to make the critical decision right there in that moment. So right Abram in this passage being asked to sacrifice his son Isaac or leave his home country, his hometown. I mean like this passage we read, Abram is asked to leave, unplug, uproot from his hometown. What happens when you leave your hometown? I mean you can guess. You have nothing, nada. No more connections, no nothing because you got to start everything from scratch. And that's hard, right? That's tough. When my dad, for example, left Korea during the Korean War years ago, my grandma gave him a small bag of dirt. And that's exactly what it was, a bag of dirt that she had collected from their backyard. A bag of dirt. Can you imagine? How would you like that as a going away gift somewhere, right? If you're leaving your hometown, you get that as a gift from your mom. She packed it for him so that whenever he gets homesick in America, he's supposed to take a spoonful of that dirt, put it in, mix it in hot water, and drink it. And that was supposed to take away homesickness. At least that was a remedy during that time. And that was an old Korean way of getting rid of homesickness. So my dad did that. He took that with him in his bag. And whenever he would get homesick, Whenever he would remember Korea, whenever he would think about his family and his mom, he would take a spoonful of that, put it in hot water, mix it up, and drink it. Can you believe that? I don't know if it really took away homesickness in his life, but that's what he was told to do. I mean, it sure sounds like it would be effective, right? I don't think it will only cure homesickness, but whatever it is that's ailing you, right? Anyhow, you get the drift, right? Abram left his hometown, not because he wanted to, but because God asked him to. Why? Because God had another plan for his life, a better plan. And this is often true of us as well. We don't understand it. We don't quite see it in the moment. We can't quite see the future like God can. But God says, I will lead you. That's the promise he made to Abram. And the same is true in our lives as well. Trust me, he says. I've got a plan for you. And it's not a bad one. It's a good one. I will make you into a great nation and I'll bless other people through you, is what he says. Sometimes, obviously, for us, his plans seem too big, out there, way out. And maybe even just a tad bit scary. I'm sure it was scary for Abram. So as a result, we shrug or walk away. We shake our heads and say, ah, 
I ain't going there. That's not, that's not for me, God. Thanks, but no thanks. As if to say, here I am, God. But send Sonny. Here I am, God. Send Larry. Here I am, God. But please send Dr. Pennant. Not me. Not me. Right? What is it that God is asking you to do? Or asking you to process? But you are shrugging your shoulders about? Is God asking you to make amends with someone? But you'd rather put it off as long as possible? Maybe there's a new challenge, but you feel like you need more or clearer sign or something. I mean, the Bible is full of folks that have to deal with tough decision making. And it's not always hunky-dory or all that attractive, right? I mean, just like, you know, the life of Jesus. Look at the life of Jesus for a moment. But he did it. It wasn't an easy call, right? It was tough. It required sacrificing his life. He followed his father's call, however, because he saw something beyond himself. Abram too in this passage of Genesis 12 saw something beyond himself. Jesus saw us. He saw the likes of you and me and he didn't give up or give in. I want to pause, you know, for a little bit and maybe think through just a couple of things. Uh, the dream that you might have or the dream that I might have, is it from God or is it from within? When we feel that nudge, that challenge, that call, is it from within or is it really from God? This is an important question to ask because sometimes our dreams come from selfish motivations or ambitions, right? It's not all bad, but we need to examine that from time to time. And what can happen is that we can, only, we can not only wreck our lives in the process, but run over other people if, not, if we're not careful. We tend to be in control in a dream like that. But if it's a dream that begins with God in mind, He will complete the work in the process. He will see to it that the dream comes to fruition in His time. The second question that we can have is this. Does the dream I have give me undying passion? Abram had passion about the direction God was leading him in. He decided to move at all costs. He wanted to lead a life that was holy, humble, and set apart for God and His work. Third question is this. Does the dream or vision that I have or that we have serve as a source of blessing to others around me? Because dreams with selfish ambition only serves to make me happier or more comfortable. But dreams that come from God enable us to see the bigger picture and help others in the process. Now, if you have a chance, I'd like to invite you, all of you, to watch the movie Dawn Wall if you haven't. But in this part of the story, they, these guys who went climbing in Kyrgyzstan actually get capture. They were in a strange country and all they wanted to do was climb. That's the whole reason they were there. They traveled all the way to Kyrgyzstan just so that they can climb. A new place, new mountain, new challenge, new hopes and new dreams, right? But they were caught up between the religious rebels, sort of like ISIS, right, of our day, and, and the national military. So they were caught between these two groups and they were captured. They had no food for like six days or longer. They didn't get much sleep at all. They had no idea if they could survive or be, even be able to go back home. And so these guys were just, they had to make a decision. They had to make some very tough and challenging decisions. They had no idea what was coming. And they suffered. And they were tormented. And nearly starved to death. This wasn't part of their plan, right? This wasn't part of the deal. I mean, being kidnapped, taken in a foreign country, is not something that we plan for, right? Who'd want that? But you know what? This event, as difficult and as painful and as challenging as it was, made them stronger. It actually made these guys tougher. 
And that's actually what enabled them to climb the Dawn Wall. It made them more determined. It made them more persistent. It made them cheer each other on. At least for Tommy, this event made him more focused and determined. So when he went back to the U.S., he was more determined than ever before. He was stronger. Through the pain, through the difficult moments, he came out stronger. He knew he could inspire more people and give hope where hope was needed. Like saying, you know, if I can do it, you guys can do it as well. If I can do it, if I can climb this wall, you can do it as well. And that's exactly the way, that's exactly the fashion in which he motivated and challenged his friend. Whatever wall that's in front of you today, I don't know what that is, but you know, and God knows. Don't cave in. And remember that God is the one that is leading us. He's the one that is leading you each step of the way. This is also the story of the cross, isn't it? He says, I know your pain. I know your story. I know your struggles. And I have one thing to say to you. I am with you always. So whatever challenge it is that you are facing today, and whatever wall it is that you may be needing to climb, it's tough. There's no easy answers, right? But remember that God is there for you in the here and now. Let's pray together, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, there are times in life when uninvited events and uh, stuff just come our way and we're just totally unprepared for. But a lot of times it is through these troublesome times and events and hardships that you grow us up into a person that you want us to be. So God, help us to be mindful of that. And in the difficult moments of our lives, help us to remember who you are. And more than anything, that you are there with us. We may not have all the answers to our questions or to our problems, but we know one thing for sure, that you are there, that your presence is real, and you make us stronger, and you make us focus, and you redeem us. So we thank you for that reality, for your presence in our lives. And that's the reason we look to you today, even when things look bad, things look hard, Things look difficult. So God, bless us as we continue our walk with you. We ask that you would continue to give us strength, wisdom, as we move on. So we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.